Well, hello. Welcome back to my amazing friends and welcome to those who are new. So today we have a very fun video planned. It's a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. It's another styling video. I have been getting a lot of people asking me about how to dress in a fantasy-esque way, but a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more casual. And as it turns out, that is exactly the video that I've been wanting to do. I originally wanted to focus more on nightcore, but as I started developing the outfits and the looks, I thought it would be better to kind of do an amalgamation of a bunch of different fantasy inspired aesthetics. So I'm actually going to be kind of lumping them all into one term, which I'm going to dub fantasy core, which I did not invent that word. It is already a pre-existing hashtag. However, I'm using it in this context in order to describe looks that are inspired by fairy core, knight core, royal core, and hobbit core. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a video dedicated to each core because it can get, get yeah, it can get a bit confusing because all of these kind of sprung off of cottage core, which is the love of slow living, country lifestyle, kind of old fashioned, whimsical aesthetic. I mean, just plop it into Pinterest and you'll get the gist. Long flowy skirts, plants, stuff like that. But basically when you add core to a word, you're basically saying a style inspired by this. So in the case of fairy core, of course it's a style inspired by fairies. Now, depending on the person, it can mean different things, but when you look it up on Pinterest, what you're gonna notice are a lot of light, airy fabrics, some light colors, but also a lot of neutrals, things that are inspired by nature. A lot of it kind of gives me flower or forest fairy vibes. So you'll see a lot of asymmetrical hem lines, exposed hems, but you'll also see corsets, bodices, lace-up details, as well as tiered skirts. You'll also see a lot of floral motifs, a lot of foliage motifs. So that's kind of what I think of when I think of fairy core. Now there are a couple offshoots of fairy core. You'll also see the term fairy core grunge thrown around and it's basically the same thing, but you'll notice a lot more darker tones and it's a little bit more focused on natural colors as well as you'll see a lot more of those like grungy asymmetrical hemlines, ripped hemlines, things like that. Doc Martens, it's kind of, it kind of has a lot in common with Whimsagoth, like the more hippie side of Whimsagoth. So for that reason, in today's video, some of the looks will have some Whimsagoth elements to it because I'm very much inspired by Whimsagoth. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you will know this because it works so well with fairy core and fairy core is one of my favorites. So. And then the second aesthetic that we're going to be borrowing some elements from is Nightcore. So when you look up Nightcore, you're going to see a lot of consulting the notes. You'll see a lot of chainmail motifs, homages, homages, homages to and silhouettes emulating armor, leather straps, buckles, suede, also a lot of neutral tones, but sometimes you'll see velvet, which is more leaning towards like a noble knight, like a higher class knight, like a prince esque night, if that makes sense. Think Enchanted. And then Royal Core also has some elements in common with Night Core when you go into the more darker side of Royal Core. So you'll see jewel tones, tapestry fabrics, velvet. This is the more medieval side of Royal Core. However, there is a different side where it's more princessy, like princess core, if you want to call it that. So you'll see a lot of light, airy florals, luxurious fabrics. It's very Marie Antoinette. It's very coquette. You'll see things that are kind of like Versailles inspired, like especially the decor. And then finally we have Hobbit core, one of my other favorites. So with this, you'll see a lot of natural fabrics, natural and neutral tones, browns, greens, tans, also some jewel tones like burgundies, purples. As far as the fabrics, you'll see wools, linen, cotton and then for the feminine side you'll see dirndls corsets and flowy skirts as well as flower crowns and then for the more masculine side you'll see trousers whether that's wool or linen or corduroy waistcoats or suspenders you'll probably comment that hey that sounds like cottage core and you are correct it leans very much cottage core but it's more like a folk side uh, a little more European German I don't know um, if anyone has any insight in what cultures might have have had an influence let me know but this specific aesthetic is inspired by the slow living side of the halflings of middle earth in the tolkien books 
cottagecore, but make it fantasy, basically. So now that we have defined the terms as best we can in a short amount of time, I am going to go through the outfits that I made and kind of break them down and talk about the different elements that I used in order to make the outfits and also what kind of makes them more casual instead of just being a full cosplay. Because the reason why I'm doing this is because sometimes you just don't want to go out in a full cosplay and elf ears and looking like you're going to the Ren Fair or to a comic convention, but you still want to have that element of fantasy, that fun, that nerdy, that whimsy to really show your personality and not blend in totally, but blend in enough to where you're not going to get mobbed by I don't know, whoever mobs people in cosplays. You know those people that camp out outside of anime conventions with those signs that say you're going to hell? Yeah, those people. So now we will start with looking at the outfits. The first outfit, I found this really cool lace-up grommet detail sweater. And there's two elements here that I'm pulling from. You know, the, we've got the lace-up, we've got the grommets, which is very night core. It can all, like lace-up and grommets can be any of the cores, but this one specifically has a very warrior look to it, which I like. And then it has that dark burgundy. Remember, a lot of these aesthetics will incorporate jewel tones. And I really like this burgundy because it's not too saturated it's a little bit more subtle and then another thing you're gonna notice in a lot of these outfits since I'm trying to make it more comfortable more casual is I use some black or dark leggings along with my knee-high boots the reason why I did this is because a nothing more comfortable than some black leggings right or whatever color leggings I just happen to wear a lot of black leggings because I go with everything but then also I feel like the legging kind of emulates the tights like the medieval tights a little bit except they're not like a bright color like you might see at a Ren Fair and and one place I like to get my leggings is actually Target. The ones that I'm wearing right now that I wear like all the freaking time and that they're constantly in rotation is uh, Target. I think it's called the All in Motion. I think that might be the brand. I have two pairs. I have a black pair and an orange pair. The orange pair I don't really, with these looks, I don't really use. But the black pair, I mean, I wear them a lot. They are going to be falling apart, so I'll probably get more. They also have pockets. But my other favorite pair, which you guys are gonna see in an upcoming outfit, are these dark gray ones. And what I really like is, since they're not black, it kind of gives a different look, but also they have this, I don't know how well you can see it, but it has this texture, like these seams right here. It kind of gives it an edgier look, which I really like. And then I felt like this sweater needed a little bit more definition, so I added my trusty waist corset belt. And then I added another belt with my little, my little pouch, which, this might be a little bit too costumey for some people because, you know, we're adding the, the corset belt and then the leaf pouch, but I feel like it could pass. I don't know. I, li I like it. I would wear it out in public, but that's just me. I'm pretty comfortable wearing things out in public like that. Now, the next outfit shows one of my staple pieces in my wardrobe, and that is one of my square neck poofy blouses. I got this particular one at Ross, which if you don't have Ross in your area, you can also look for Burlington Coat Factory, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, or if you're not in America, it's basically like an outlet store where they get merchandise from a bunch of different stores to sell at a discount because it didn't sell at the other place. At least that's my understanding of where the merchandise comes from. I know they do receive some things specifically for them, but yeah, sometimes things are like a season behind the current fashion, but we don't care about that on this channel because we, we have our own sense of fashion. We're not following the trends unless the trends just happen to be what we like. And then I also added another one of my trusty lace-up belts. I felt like this one kind of needed it. And again, I'm wearing it with leggings because you can't go wrong with some black leggings. I will wear leggings as pants till the day I die. And you can really pair whatever shoes you want. I have my Leonas, which I literally wear with almost every outfit. I also have my Breckles, which you guys saw me put on before, but I don't really like these because they have no tread. So eventually I'm going to, I'm going to invest in some real leather boots with tread. Maybe not. Oops. Wouldn't be a Scotty video without some chaos. And then one of my favorite pieces, and when I say my favorite, I, I have three of them at this point. I have a problem. Is my night hoodie, which I call it my night hoodie, but it's basically just a lace-up hoodie with foofy sleeves. The brand is something navy. I got my first one off of ThreadUp, but I did find my second one off Poshmark. And then my third one, I actually found off of the brand's website. They had them on clearance and I was like, don't mind if I do. So I grabbed another one. So now I have three. They're no longer on the website, but you could probably find them on Poshmark. 
Poshmark if you're wanting this specific one. It came in two colors, the cream color that I have and then like a really light dusty blue. I didn't like how like light the blue was, otherwise I would have gone for it, but I do plan on dyeing one of my extra ones in the future, maybe like a burgundy color or a purple. And I'll probably choose the one that has the most stains because I wear them around the house all the time and I spill my snacks on them or my coffee, so. And of course, with leggings, with boots, it looks dope as hell. And also, it looks like you're going on a quest. You can't go wrong with that. Next, I wanted to experiment and I wanted to try to emulate chain mail. Now, the only gray vest I have is a warm tone gray vest, but I still wanted to kind of give it a shot. So I paired it with one of my foofy blouse, blousey blouses, my white blouses. I probably should have chosen my linen one instead, but this is the one I had on hand at the time. I didn't want to have to go rummaging for the other one. And then I paired it with some neutral pants. Um, these specific pants are from Zara and I got these secondhand off of ThreadUp, but you can get them from Zara if you're looking for just some, they have some really nice basics, but you can oftentimes find Zara at thrift stores. It's one of the, like the most common brands that I thrift besides Target brands and H&M. So keep your eyes peeled for, for those types of pants. I love a good olive green. Olive green and light sage green are like my favorite colors right now. So, you know, having some olive green pants, I have a few different greens. Yeah, I have a few different shades of green pants, but these ones have to be my most versatile ones. And also they have a little bit of stretch, so they're pretty comfortable. Now, if I wanted to go a little bit more casual, I did try it with my black leggings and it still looked pretty good. It's a little bit more alternative when you put it with the black, cause, it, cause like black, black leggings could kind of look like black skinny jeans. And you know, I was a black skinny jean gal myself when I was in my early twenties. So felt like it was a throwback, especially with my docs. And then the next outfit, I decided to make it a little bit more cash. So I busted out one of my D&D &D shirts. So this is another tip if you want to introduce some fantasy nerdiness to your outfit. Just get t-shirts of your favorite fandoms and style them accordingly. I have a couple videos, like short videos, in my library, in my YouTube shorts about styling nerdy t-shirts or nerdy inspired outfits, but not just like it's jeans and a t-shirt kind of deal. So check that out. So I, again, leggings, it's my uniform, but if I wanted to spice it up, I paired it with my Knock Thrice cardigan, which is a Nightcore inspired cardigan by my friend Nora. I will put their link down in the description. I know that there's gonna be another sale. They were on pre-order and they were sold out, but I believe the 25th, there will be another sale. So I will link that in the description. It also comes in black, which I will be, I don't know, save one for me guys, I want one. Okay, and then the next D&D shirt is actually the one that I'm wearing right now. Both shirts are from the brand Heroes and Villains. My affiliate link will be in the description as well, as well as my coupon code, cause your girl needs money. So if you guys wanna get one, you can you can go there. They also have t-shirts and merch from other fandoms like Star Wars. So if you're not much of a DD and d person, they got, they got something for everybody, so check it out. This is not sponsored by the way, I just really like their merch and I joined their affiliate program, so. And we know I love my olives, so then I added my lace-up sweatshirt, which I got at Salvation Army, but the brand is Old Navy. And I love this sweatshirt so much, I ended up getting a purple one off of ThreadUp. And again, we have that lace-up detail, which is, it could, you know, any of the aesthetics, but for me, this is like one of my nightcore items. So then I added my belt and my, my, le my little leaf pouch, which I love so much. It makes it so much easier to be hands-free and not have to worry about leaving your purse somewhere on accident, which I have done. And then, do, 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 do. and if we wanted to make it a little bit more classy classy, I paired it with a maxi green plaid skirt, which you guys might have seen on this channel before. The brand is Romwe. I got it when I was reviewing the Romwe Fairy Core Grunge line, which I'll put the video somewhere if you guys are still interested, but the video did come out like a year ago. But I actually really love this skirt. I use it a lot. And I, see, I, I'm very picky with my maxi skirts because I feel like, especially with how I style it, I feel like it can go a little too much modest, a little too conservative if you don't style it right, but I love styling long skirts with t-shirts and Doc Martens and it gives it more of a grunge, a bit more of a alt feel. So that's one of my favorite ways to style style skirts. Now, if you wanna see more about how I style t-shirts just to make it more aesthetic, I also have my styling t-shirts in a cottagecore way video. I do plan on making an updated version of that to be more than just cottagecore because I, I have like fandom t-shirts that I would like to try styling as well. 
in a longer video besides my shorts, so stay tuned for that. Speaking of the green skirt, I actually styled a couple different ways. The next way is actually a little bit more whimsicoth. I have my mesh t-shirt that I got off of AliExpress a couple years ago, and I like to layer over the top of that cami, so I have this velvet orange cami. The brand is Shein, but I mean, she's still trucking and I've had it for a couple years, so you know, gotta, gotta get the use out of it to, you know, mitigate the fact that Shein is kind of a dubious brand that's polluting the environment, but it's also cheap and some of us are broke, so. The next outfit is very similar. I styled this thrifted Victoria's Secret velvet green tank top. It's not cropped, so I'm eventually gonna crop it, maybe make it look more corsety because it does have this really cool seam line in the front that kind of makes me think of a corset. So I'm probably gonna thrift flip that eventually, but I styled it in a similar way as the previous outfit while also adding my, my chain belt, which that's another thing that you can add to make it a little bit more fantasy, especially if the chain belt either has like some sort of a fantasy motif. Like I know Moons isn't fantasy, but it's kind of like feels magical. Or you can find a belt that's almost feels armor-ish or chainmail-ish. That would be cool. And then of course I added my trusty leaf pouch. I get so much mileage out of that leaf pouch. I recommend it. I also have a leaf backpack, which this is going to be another tip. I'll probably, I'm going to make a section about accessories, but I just want to highlight this backpack. So freaking cool and it matches. So I definitely recommend these. I will link leafling bags in the description. I've talked about them so many times on this channel, but the more I can plug them, the better because they are my friends. And then lastly, with this green skirt, I also really like to pair a floral top with it. This So this makes it a little bit more fairy core. This top is one of my favorite tops. You guys have seen me wear this multiple times. I actually thrifted it, but the brand is, I think, Wild Fable from Target. Target's another place to get stuff like this, but we're going to talk more in depth of where to buy these pieces in a later chapter. We're, get, almost, get, we're almost there, guys. We're almost through all, through all the outfits, so uh, be patient. Last two outfits. Fits, and we are totally cruising through this. We have yet another Ross blouse. It's another one of those square neck, poofy sleeve blouses. And this is also one of my wardrobe staples. So it works with so many different aesthetics. I definitely recommend if you have multiple aesthetics, get basic, but also basic to you pieces that work for multiple aesthetics. For me, this is a basic. I didn't really do that much styling in this one because I was having trouble finding like a not a bodice, but is a bodice to put over. And I wasn't liking how it was looking, but I just paired it with this really cute, white cream gold thread skirt. I don't know how to describe it. It's very fairy core. It's one of my wardrobe staples. I got that at Ross, I believe as well. If you have Ross, please check Ross. They're great. And then lastly, this is actually one of my favorite outfits. Uh, I ended up wearing it for the rest of the night when I, when I put that video together. And I paired it with my thrifted 90s bell sleeve top. So first we have the lace up detail in the front of the top, but another thing to look for are bell sleeves, which is another homage to Whimsicott. Whimsicott takes some notes from like hippie 70s style, so you'll see a lot of bell sleeves. So if you're adding some Whimsicott, bell sleeves, and also sometimes you'll see that in fairy core, which fairy core kind of steals from Whimsicott sometimes. So actually the term fairy core I think came first, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna fault fairy core for that. So now we need to talk about what specifically to look for. Kind of to kind of recap what we just talked about, lace up details, grommet details, things that kind of look like a corset that aren't a corset. Corset. I like tank tops or camis that kind of have like that front seam that kind of emulate where the boning would be for a corset. It can have a straight hem or it can have more of like a U or V shape hem. Very cute. If you're looking for stores to find these, sometimes you can thrift them if they're like Y2K. And also since they're super popular, you can find them sometimes in the thrift stores because a lot of fast fashion are coming out with them and they're already hitting the thrift stores due to overconsumption. But if you must buy it brand new and you're on a budget, you could check out cider. If you're a little bit less concerned about the environment and quality, you could try Shein and Romwe. But you can also, might I suggest, see if there are any small businesses that are making designs like that, like on Etsy. I will try to find some. I'm going to have tons and tons of links for you guys in the description, so definitely check that. 
My last suggestion though is I have seen some tutorials on how to upcycle t-shirts or tops to make them look more like a corset, which that is something that we're gonna be doing in the future on this channel anyway as one of our thrift flips. So I recommend upcycling or thrift flipping a top that you happen to already like the color or print of. Other things when it comes to jewelry, I recommend sword jewelry, butterfly or fairy wings, dragons. Like I have these little fairy wings. I also I also really like D&D dice, like D20 earrings. I have one pair and I want more. They're so cute. Of course, mushrooms, things with nature, flowers, things like that. You know, you can kind of like mix and match. I also really like ear cuffs. I have a fairy pair of ear cuffs and I have one that just kind of goes around my ear. They're super cool and I like them. Things to kind of add interest. I also have been really interested in chainmail jewelry, which you can DIY. There are tutorials or you can support a business. I have some actual Actually link if you'd like to find some. I also have a really cool tote bag linked, but I'll show you one that I have. I don't think the artist sells this online, but it's super cool and it has swords and flowers. We love, we love swords and flowers on this channel. Where should you shop? Well, I will always advocate for thrifting first, whether that's at your local thrift store or charity shop or consignment store, or you could try some online places like Poshmark, Depop, Mercari, whatnot, eBay, whatever is available to you in your country. I recommend look, looking into that. Um, when searching, I would search for everywhere except ThreadUp, because ThreadUp, it doesn't, you can't search by vibe, but you can search whimsical goth, fairy core, night core. People that know the aesthetic will list it as such. When it comes to brands, any of the Target brands, Old Navy, Zara, Sto I think Storia is a brand I found recently. What I'm going to do in post because I can't think of it right now, I'm going to put on the screen some brands that I like to, to search on ThreadUp right here. Give it a couple seconds. And we're done. So some in-store places, we talked about Ross, TJ Maxx, Burlington Coat Factory, Marshalls, Target. Sometimes Walmart would be popping off with their, with their stuff. Don't sleep on Walmart. Some brands like on Amazon, one of them I think is called R Vivimos or something like that. And I also have some stuff in my Amazon storefront. So if you wanna shop that, yeah, links. Um, and then as far as my favorite brands, like small businesses, of course, I mentioned Leafling Bags, Costarero Real, which I know I'm saying wrong, and then just like places on Etsy that I'm I'm, I'm gonna link, because I can't remember, but you know, small businesses. I will always advocate for thrifting and small businesses, if you have the money and the time and the patience. As far as shoes go, you guys kind of saw my shoes and I showed you my Leonas earlier, but I also have, let's see, where is it? There's just a big pile of crap down here. I will insert footage of my shoes, the shoes that I like to use because I can't find them in my pile of crap. Of course, when it comes to bags, I showed you my leaf bags. I also really love my little satchel. This is, you know, it looks pretty normal enough, but it also kind of has like a Flynn Rider satchel flair to it, which I really love. It's very vintage. This works for like multiple aesthetics. And then I also have this backpack that I thrifted. It is a Target brand, Massimo. I call this my Bilbo Baggins bag. So yeah, browns, leathers, brass buckles, you don't have to do brown leather, but I just prefer it. And then um, when it comes to shoes, look for lace-up boots, preferably real leather if you don't mind. But if you get them secondhand and you don't usually, you know, yeah. And then um, you can also do riding boots if you're, you know, they look pretty, pretty snazzy too. That's a little bit more nightcore. And then of course we talked about belts. Lace-up belts are great. Leather belts with like really interesting buckles, chain belts. Amazon's a good place to get them. Thrifting. I will always advocate for thrifting first when it comes to, to belts because my favorite belts are all thrifted. I think we covered our bases here. If you're really extra, you could get a crown. I'm the king of the castle. So yeah, that about wraps it up. Those are my tips for how to insert some fantasy, some fun to satisfy your inner child when getting dressed every day. And I really hope that helps. I really hope that you were able to draw some inspiration from this. If this video helped, make sure to give it a big ol' like, share it with your friends, as well as comment down below your favorite look, your favorite piece, or if you just have any questions for me, if there's something that I didn't cover. I'm also going to be linking in the description 
description some people that I recommend you follow that emulate the style of fantasy perfectly. One of them is my friend Kiki. They made a video not too long ago, I think a few months ago, about this very subject. So I would recommend watching that video after this one if you would like some more inspo as well as where they also like to get pieces. So yeah. Yes. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys. I love your support. I love your comments and um, yeah, I can't wait to have more fun with you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.